Hi, my name is David Buer, Product Manager at Leviton Manufacturing. Today we're talking about the Piccolo Scans console. Before any console activity, especially when you're starting a new session, it's important to verify a few basic things. For example, right now I have all channel levels at zero. That gives us a good starting point. To quickly set all channel levels at zero, you could use the keypad by entering channel 1 through 48, or the maximum number of channels you have, at zero, then enter. That will set them all at zero level. I'm going to go ahead and res use the reset button here and the clear button to clear my command line just to get me back to a basic starting point. And now we're going to jump into recording a submaster. Now, a submaster is a collection of channels at a level or at a proportional level that's proportionally recalled using a master fader. Of course, the first step again is to record a submaster. To do that, we'll want to first set our console mode into submaster mode. To do that, we push soft key 1. You can see from referencing the display on the console that soft key 1 is currently assigned to the mode function. That's for changing between the console operating modes. So I'm going to push mode. Now the soft keys have changed to where soft key 1 is now theater, 2 is single scene, 3 is double, and 4 is manual. Now those are for the four operating modes of the console. Since we're recording submasters and playing the back on masters, we want our bottom row of faders to be masters. Currently they're assigned to channels. Now, how do you know what they're assigned to? Well, if you look at the LEDs, you see a green LED lit here next to a C. That indicates that these bottom row of faders are channels. Now watch that LED as I change it to theater mode, and you'll notice it changes to red next to the S, indicating they're now submasters. So now we have our top row of faders configured as channels, and our bottom row of faders configured as 12 multipurpose masters. Next, we're going to set some channel levels. I'm going to set channel 1 at full, 2 at 50%, and 3 at approximately 25%. Okay, this is going to become our first submaster assigned to this fader down there. To make that recording an assignment, we're going to push the load button, followed by the bump button or the flash button above master 1. The console now indicates that it has loaded a group into Submaster 1 and it's recorded it. Let's see what we did. We're going to lower our, lower our channel levels. Now we're going to raise Submaster 1 and note that the levels are recalling. Now you'll note in this case that channels 1, 2, and 3 are showing with no levels. Now why could that be? You do see them turning yellow, indicating that they're playing back from a master, but there's no levels there. Well, let's come over here and check our masters. You'll note that both masters, the submaster master and the grandmaster, are both set at zero. In order to get something to actually output from the console, we'll need both of those to be at full. So now they're at full, we see a level playing back just below the channels there on the screen. One of the unique things about submasters is not only that it's a group of channels that are recorded and can be played back from a single handle, but it plays them back proportionally. Remember, we recorded channel 1 at full, 2 at 50%, and 3 at about 25%. When the submaster is at full, we see those recorded values played back at exactly the recorded levels. When we move our submaster down to 50%, however, you'll see that each of those recorded levels are at 50% of their recorded level. That's what we mean by proportional recall. So whereas we recorded channel 1 at full, it's when the master's at 50%, it plays back at 50%. Channel 2, which was recorded at 50%, if the master's at 50, plays back at 25. And channel 3, which was recorded at 25%, is now playing at approximately 12 because we were, we're at 50% master level. So we've recorded Submaster 1. Now, let me point out to you a couple of things that have happened here. In the Piccolo Scan console, there really isn't such a thing as a master per se. Really what we've done is we've used a shortcut for a two-step process. Step 1 was record a group. 
Step two was assign that group to a master. Now, like I said, by using the load function, we just took those active channels and loaded them into the master, which is really the shortcut functionality. But to split that into its parts, you could do that as a two-step process. Now, let me show you that process. So I'm going to go ahead and set channels four, five, and six at full. And I'm going to record these as group one. So I'm going to say group one record. Okay, so I've now recorded a group one with channels four, five, and six at full. So we can pull those down. Now we're going to assign group one into master two. To do that, you say group one load, and we're going to load it right over here into master two. So now we've got group one assigned to master two. And you can see that replaying back when I move the masters. Now, you'll n you can recall which groups are assigned to the masters by looking here at the center of the monitor and you see master one is G for group and then 500. Master two, again, G for group. In this case, it is group one. Now, remember when we use just the load key to both transparently record the group and assign it to the master? It started recording that group at 500. Anything that you use a shortcut to record a group on and assign it to something records it a number starting at 500 and it increments by one at every time you assign it. That's done so that groups one through 499 can be used for your own purpose or user groups or anything along those lines. So at this point in time, we have two submasters recorded. Uh, the first one is group 100 the or 500, the second one is group 1. We could repeat this process creating as many submasters as we wanted until we had all 12 masters assigned as groups. Remember when we introduced you to this console, we told you that these were really multi-purpose faders and only one of the things that could be assigned to them were submasters, or rather one of the uses was submasters. Other uses for these faders are queues, queue lists, effects, or rate controls. And throughout the course of these training videos, we'll be showing you how to assign all of those things to masters. One of the other things we've told you is that there's multiple pages of masters. Now that's used so you can take a particular look of the masters. In this case, like let's say I wanted to save off to memory, uh, group 500 assigned to master one, group one assigned to master two, and save that as a page in memory. I could do that very easily by saying page one record. Let's review where we're at. At this point in time, we've recorded two masters. The first master we've got uh, group 500 assigned to. The second master we've got group one assigned to. How do I keep track of that? Well, if you look at the monitor, you'll notice right here in the middle of the screen, I can see my 12 masters and all of their assignments. If I look at the first master, labeled 01, it tells me a number of things. First, it tells me the current level is at zero. You'll notice as the master raises and lowers, that level changes. You see just below the number one, the G indicates that a group is assigned to this master. Next to the G, it says 500. That tells us that group 500 is assigned to the group. Just below the G, you see an up arrow and three. That tells you what's going to happen if you push the button above the master. In this case, it indicates that it's going to fade to full over three seconds. So I push the button. It'll fade to full. You'll see a nice little countdown happening there on the monitor. You'll note now that it's reached full. It's changed to a down arrow and a three, indicating that it's going to fade down in three seconds. Any time during that fade, you can push the button again to stop that fade right where it's at. And you'll see the display tells us right now the current level is at 63%. And if I push the button, it's going to fade down in 1.9 seconds. That's really the time that's left in my fade. So we're going to go ahead and let that play back down to zero. Now, as you'll recall from previous uh, introductions to the console, we said that these bottom row of faders when in master or theater mode were really multi-purpose faders. 
Now, we call them multipurpose faders because there's multiple things that can be assigned to them. In the case of the example that I've showed you today, we've assigned groups to them so that they're treated just like submasters. You also can assign effects, rate controls, queues, or queue lists to these masters, and they can be pretty much anything you want, or any master can be anything you want. That's why it's important to understand what's assigned and how the monitor can tell us what's assigned to those masters. Other ways that you can help keep track of what's assigned to things is with the naming features of this console. You'll remember that we recorded a group 500 and a group 1. Let's say that we wanted to call group 500 left and group 1 right. You can do that by accessing the group screen. To access the group screen, simply double click the group button. This now takes us to the list of groups. And you'll see for each group, we see our fade up time, our fade down times, our wait times, and the fifth field over there is labeled text. That is there so we can label what these groups are. That field will then display on our main screen. To navigate through this screen, you use the arrow keys. So I'm currently at group one, which I said we wanted to call right. So to label that group, I'm going to use the alphanumeric keypad. Now, this operates much like your cell phone does when you're sending text messages, where the first press you get the first letter. In the case of the seven key, the first press will give you P. The second press will give you a Q. The third press will give you R. The fourth press will give you S. Now we wanted to call this R, so we're going to press this button three times. Will you now see an R up on the screen? The four key is for G, H, and I, and you see these letters labeled right on the screen. So three presses to give us I. After a brief pause, it'll move to the next field. We can now press once for G, two presses for H, and T is the first letter on the eight key, so we only need to press it one. We're going to do exactly the same thing on group 500, which we said we wanted to call left. So now we've labeled group 500 left and group 1 right. To exit the group list, you simply press the exit button right here in the center of the console. You'll now see labeled on the screen, you can see those labels right here underneath the master view so we can see that those groups are called left and right. So we have these 12 masters down at the bottom. You also may recall that we said we had multiple pages of masters. Now you always see which page you're in by looking right here in the middle of the screen. It says I'm currently on page zero. Now page zero is really my live working page. That's not something that I can record and save. But let's say I did want to save this configuration of masters to memory. I can do that by recording a new page. This case, I'm going to call it page one. So we're going to say, page one, then record to save that page into memory. So now I can make any modifications that I want to these masters and nothing's going to change what the configuration of page one is. I can recall that at any time. To recall a page from memory, you use a similar syntax. You'll say page one, load. It now pulls page one from memory and loads it into the masters. Now remember that pages and things that are recorded to masters within pages are different functions. The page is simply a configuration of masters. So you can delete pages, change pages, re-record pages, but that doesn't necessarily change the memory itself. For example, I currently have page one active. I see that from the memory here. I can unassign what's in master one by using the delete key and then pressing the button above master one. That has unassigned master one. Now, you'll note here next to the right of page one, it says page one modified. It tells me that it's modified because I had page one active, but now I've changed it, so I now have a different page one. So maybe I want to re-record this as the new page one. 
So I'm simply going to say page one record. It says page exists, record to confirm. I'm going to push record a second time now to confirm it. I now have a new page one recorded. In this case, all I have is group one assigned to master two. We're going to go back to our group list, however. I want to show you that group 500, the group that was previously assigned to master one, still exists. So see, the, the memories themselves and what's assigned to master pages are two different things and they are non-destructive. That wraps up this section or this tutorial on the Piccolo and Piccolo Scan series of consoles.